Hello and welcome to Northumbria University Library. My name is Helen Chadwick. I work in the skills development team at the library. Our team helps all students with learning skills such as academic writing, referencing and how to find good quality information. In this session I'm going to talk to you about the different sources of information available to you, how these sources of information can help with your assessments and how to find these sources using library search. Reading is a vital part of any assessment writing process. You'll need to read different sources of information to get the background knowledge you need to complete your assessments. You'll also need to use some of these sources to provide evidence to support the points or opinions you present in your assessments. For example, in an assessment you can't just say you think 99% of people love libraries without providing evidence for that fact. Ideally, that evidence would be from an academic source. More on that later. And it would directly support the claim you've made. Unfortunately, the variety of different terms used to describe these sources of information can be confusing. People use terms like literature, resources, materials and so on. But it all means basically the same thing. Something you need to read to help you write an assessment such as an essay, and potentially use as evidence in that assessment. In other words, a source of information is something you can use to support your writing. It doesn't even need to be something you read. It could be audio or visual. However, most of the time it will be something written down. Remember, anything you use as evidence in your writing needs to be referenced. That is, you need to make it clear where any information or text you use comes from. Here are a few examples of the sources of information you might use to help you write your assessments. We will start with peer review journal articles. These are articles that have been written by academics and then checked by other academics to ensure they have reached some level of reliability before being published. That checking is known as the peer review process. That doesn't mean everything in those articles is correct but it is the most reliable source of information we have, our gold standard for evidence. These peer review journal articles are what you should be using most regularly to support your writing. We will see in a little while the best way to find this type of article. Academic books are another great place to go. These have been through an editorial process, but not one as thorough as the peer review process. They are often a great source of introductory information and a great place to start your reading. So, academic journal articles and books are the two main sources you should use in your assessments. These are the academic sources I mentioned before. However, if you are writing about a very up-to-date topic or need another perspective, then you may need to use other sources of information. Here are a few examples. Datasets can provide you with up-to-date background information for your assessment. For example, how many people aged 18 to 30 live in a particular country or area? There are a variety of datasets available through the library. For example, NHS Digital or the Office for National Statistics. However, for any dataset, you need to think about why the data was collected and by whom so you are aware of any potential biases in the data. Newspapers are another great source of opinion and information, but if you are going to use them, you need to let the reader of your assessment know that the information you use from the paper may be biased. One newspaper may have a very different take on an event to another. The issue of potential bias in datasets and newspapers is why they are lower down in terms of reliability compared to academic literature. Some students use blog posts and social media as sources of information for their assessments. Generally try to avoid this, as they are extremely unreliable. That isn't to say you can never use them, but you need to think very carefully about what you are doing with them. Finally, I have to mention Wikipedia. Wikipedia can be a useful source of background information but never use it as evidence in an assessment. This is why it is separate from the main list. Wikipedia is unreliable because anyone can create and or edit a page without any background knowledge. 
So now we know what kind of sources you are looking for. But where can you find them? Well, there are lots of places to look. Module reading lists are a great place to start. These are lists of sources of information created by your module tutor and relevant to your module. They should be linked from your module Blackboard site. Alternatively, you can access them through University Library Online. Just to show you how that works, head to University Library Online and click here on the Reading Lists menu item. Here we see a search box. We can then type your module name or code here. I'll demonstrate using the Skills Development Team's reading list, Develop Your Learning Skills. Here is a list of sources. Often you'll have the option to access it online. Alternatively, there will be information about how to find it in the library. While I am here, I will show you the Subject Resources page. These are subject-specific sources of information that will help with your assessments. For example, if we go to Geography and Environmental Science, we can see links to maps such as Aerial Digimap, databases of relevant journal articles and ebook collections. There are also other selected sources relevant to the subject. These are well worth exploring as some of these will not appear in library search. We've looked at reading lists and subject resources. It goes without saying you will get good information from your lectures and seminars. However, you'll usually need to go back to the source of that information to use as evidence in your assessments. To find that source, you can ask your tutor. Or you can use library search, which is the best way to search the sources of information that the library has access to. I'd like to spend a minute explaining why we recommend students use library search. This infographic shows the various places you might think of searching for sources of information for your assessment. Most of us use a search engine like Google for our day-to-day -day searching. However, this is not a suitable place to search for your academic sources for your assessment. You'll get too many results to look through and you'll have no idea how reliable they are. Google Scholar is better. This is a freely accessible web search engine that searches for journal articles and some other sources of information like books. However, we do not generally recommend Google Scholar as you don't always know how academically reliable the journals it searches are. Also, it does not search the books the library has access to. We recommend Library Search. Library Search allows you to discover the high quality resources selected in partnership with your lecturers to directly support the programmes we offer. You are very likely to be able to access all the materials you find on Library Search. This is not the case for Google Scholar. Finally, if you plan your search carefully, you will retrieve more relevant results than you ever would using Google. So let's have a look at Library Search to see how it works. This is the University Library Online. And here we can see the search bar for library search. If you ever need help with this, remember you can click on Help. This will take you to the Library Search Toolkit, which is part of Skills Plus, our online set of learning skills guides. Alternatively, click on this blue banner to contact the Skills Development Team for help. Now we are in Library Search. The first thing to do is to sign in, which opens a lot more options for you. Now we can search for help with an assessment on the dangers of social media. To use library search, we need to pick out the key words to use as search terms, which will be danger, social media. Once we have typed that in and press search, we will get over 400,000 results. This is simply too many to look through. One issue is obvious straight away. This second item, media and health, isn't about social media but media in general. This is because Library Search has looked for three words separately. We need to tell it that social media is a phrase. We do this by using speech marks. This is called phrase searching. Notice that single words do not require this. Straight away, we are down to over 60,000 results, which is better, but still too many. We can reduce this further by using the sidebar, 
just like you would when online shopping. You can select to see peer-reviewed journals only. You can select to see peer-reviewed journals only. This material is tagged with this purple icon. You can also select whether the material is available online or in the library as a physical item. You can also select the type of sources you want to see, such as articles, book chapters or other people's dissertations. Let's select peer-reviewed journals. This gives us 33,000 results. When we think about social media, it would be unusual to want to know about social media in 1955. We can change the date range of the material here, making it for the last five years. Once we've refined by the date, we are down to 25,000 results. That's still too many, so let's add another keyword to our search to make it more specific. First, let's make sure we don't lose those filters we added by clicking here on Remember All Filters. Then we can add an example of a social media platform, say Twitch. See how the number of results is lower, down to 86. We can go through these and find ones most relevant to our work. Not all of them will be relevant, but that's okay. Here is one that looks relevant, so let's click this button which will save it so we don't lose it. We can pick that up any time in our saved items section. You can also save the search itself. To do that, click here. This allows you to come back to look through the results at another time. Let's have a look at our list of saved items. Here we can see the article we just saved, as long as any others that have been saved over the years. And on this tab we can see the saved search. You can also set an alert for this search, which means that Library Search will send you an email every time something new comes up on this search without you having to check. This is a great way to stay up to date with the relevant literature. While we are here, we can explore the My Account area where you have information on what books you have borrowed. If we go back to the search, there are some other options that are useful to know about. This one is the option to get the citation for the article. This citation can be added to the reference list in your assessment to show the sources you have used. Check with your tutor which style you will need to use. But always remember to check the citation yourself as mistakes do creep into these. If referencing is a bit of a mystery to you, then please keep listening. I'll let you know how to get help at the end of the session. We also offer training and support with EndNote, which is a reference management software package that can help you manage your references. To access the journal article, all we need to do is to click Read It Online. This takes you to a list of links. In general, it doesn't matter what link you select, just select one and it will take you to the journal homepage. Sometimes you will need to log in, other times you'll be taken straight there. Unfortunately, all of the journal access pages do look different and can take some getting used to. Take your time and if you get stuck, click on this access help guide link. Let's have a look at this article. From these pages, there is almost always a download or save as a PDF option. This allows you to keep a copy of the article on your computer, saving you from searching for it every time. However, remember to save it in a sensible place with a sensible file name, such as author name, paper title, assessment title. Otherwise, you'll never find it again. If you need any further support getting access to these sources of information, then please use this passwords link to get to the Passwords to Online Resources Guide. It provides easy to follow, 24 seven help to guide you through the login process for all of our resources. This includes journal articles, databases and eBooks, which we will move on to now. I now want to quickly show you how to access eBooks as well. This is a very similar process to accessing a journal article. Heading back to library search, we can now start a new search such as critical thinking skills. This specific search has brought up Stella Cottrell's book, which I know is a good one. To access this online, again, I just click Read Online and select one of the options. 
This book can be read online and as you see here, it is possible to download the whole book. This is not common for ebooks. Usually, you can just download individual chapters. I would suggest starting by clicking Read it online and see if it is relevant for your assessment. This is much easier with an ebook as you can search within the book for the specific word or phrase. For example, writing. And then you can look through all of the sections that might give support on this, as you can see here. There are lots of other options with ebooks, including writing notes and highlighting sections. They are well worth exploring as an alternative to and alongside traditional books. I'd now like to talk about the ways the library can help you get a hold of sources of information. If there are books or other materials you would like that Northumbria Library does not have access to, there are a couple of things you can do. First, you can use interlibrary loans. If you go to using the library and click on the interlibrary loan service link, you can see a brief description of the service. It is a simple and free process, which means library staff will locate the book or journal article in another library and either send you a digital or physical copy. Speaking of other libraries, as a Northumbria student, you do have access to Newcastle University libraries. Through a scheme called Scornal, you can access a huge number of libraries around the country. So if you are away for the holidays, but need to read a book or do some work, then you can register with Scornal. The instructions are here under Using Other Libraries, and you may be able to access the local university library for free. If you need help accessing materials, then please do get in touch with Ask for Help or the Skills Development Team. We are happy to help. One piece of software you might find helpful is Read and Write, which provides text-to-speech support and will read documents, including many PDFs. This software is available to download from the student portal. We also have Read a Friendly Resources reading list, which lists accessible learning skills resources you can find it in the Develop Your Learning Skills reading list that I showed you earlier. Finally, a word on the Library Skills Development Team. We are here to support you in finding information, including using library search, and any of the other sources of information discussed in this session. Also, because academic integrity is a key part of university life, we offer help on all aspects of referencing. We run taught sessions, both online and in person. We run regular drop-ins for skills support Monday to Thursday, remotely and on campus. There's no need to make an appointment. But you can also book a support appointment to speak with a member of staff on campus, virtually or over the phone. Finally, there is Skills Plus, which is our online set of learning skills guides, taking you through the essentials you need to start studying and completing assessments. You can find out more about the help available from the big blue develop your learning skills banner thank you for listening we hope that you enjoy your time at northumbria university